now that we've oriented ourselves to how Spring Boot uh, fits inside of IntelliJ and how a basic Spring Boot project is set up, let's go ahead and create our first controller. So I have my IntelliJ project opened up. On the left-hand side in the project pane, let's expand the source directory and go down through main, Java, and our top level package, org launch code dot hello spring. So a, every Java class we create in our application um, that's not a test will live within this package. And it's generally a good idea to organize your classes into sub packages based on their role in the application. And so before we create a new class, I wanna create a new sub package specifically for controllers. So if I right click on my top level package and in the context menu, go up to new at the top, and the first option is uh, Java class, but we wanna scroll down a little bit to package. And then the dialog that pops up, we will name this package controllers. Package names in Java uh, are generally all lowercase. Now, if I right click on my new controllers package and in the context menu, go to new again, and this time select Java class, uh, I want to name my first controller for my application. So I'm gonna call this hello controller. and I hit enter and it creates a basic Java class for me. Okay, so the first thing you need to do anytime you're making a new controller is to add a new annotation. So an annotation is basically a little setting or a piece of metadata associated with a class that'll help Spring Boot understand how it's supposed to handle the class. Every controller that we make needs a controller annotation. So I'm gonna create a new line above the class declaration and say at capital C controller. And in the little uh, context menu that pops up there, you'll get suggestions for the different controller class. Make sure that if you do choose one of these suggestions, which will auto import the package for you, that you're always choosing the org.spring framework oriented, uh, stereotype uh, oriented um, annotation package. Okay, notice that hitting enter and added that import statement to the top of the package for me. So this controller annotation tells Spring Boot that this class represents a web controller. In other words, it tells it that uh, there are methods in this class that should be set up to handle HTTP requests, okay? If you leave this annotation off, even if you write your methods correctly inside the controller, uh, Spring Boot won't recognize it as such. All right, so let's create our first um, controller handler method. Inside the class, I'm gonna make a few empty lines here, and I'm gonna create my first method. It's gonna be a public method um, with a return type of string and I'm gonna call it um, hello. And right now it will take no arguments. So just public string hello, no arguments. And then I have my method body. And for this, I just wanna return the static string hello comma spring. Okay, so this is a method that will return a string. To make this actually wire up to be a, uh, a request handler, we need to add an annotation or two to this method as well. The first annotation I'm gonna add will be um, at response body. This is an annotation we'll only use for the first couple of classes um, as we work with IntelliJ and Spring Boot. Once we get to the place where we're using templates, we won't be using response body. Response body in brief tells Spring Boot that this method will return a plain text HTTP response. In other words, it shouldn't be using a template or any fancy HTML to render its response. It's just gonna return a plain text response. And so we'll need it for the first few classes until we learn how to use templates. On top of that annotation, I'm going to add another annotation, and this is at get mapping, capital G, capital M. So this specifies to Spring Boot that this method should handle get requests. So uh, this method um, will only accept get requests in particular. So it's important that you put a request type mapping on here. You know, there are, um, there are post mappings and put mappings and delete mappings. There are these annotations for every type of um, HTTP method that's available. And by tagging a method with one of those mapping annotations, we're signifying to Spring Boot, this is the type of HTTP request that our method should accept. Okay, and that's really it. This, this method is now wired up to be a full-fledged request handler. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my application. There's two ways to do this, just to, to review. You can open the Gradle pane and double click on the boot run task, which is below tasks application. If the boot run task happens to be the most recent one that you ran, it'll show up above in this uh, bar and you can, uh, as, a, as a run configuration, and you can just press play.
And so once we do that, we'll see the startup messages as we did before. And once we see that final one that says started Hello Spring application, then we know it is fully started up and ready to accept requests. So I'm gonna open up a web browser now and navigate to localhost 8080. And now instead of seeing a 404 error message, I see the string Hello Spring. This was uh, returned by my application because I made a request. Um, in particular, I made a get request, which matched up with the get mapping, and I made a request to the root path. So routes are, are important in terms of determining which request gets sent to which controller. This particular request is going to the root path. It's the same as me saying that I want localhost colon 8080 slash with no path afterward. Remember, slash is the root path. When a request comes into Spring Boot, it needs to decide which controller and which method within that controller should handle that request. And this has to do with how the routes are set up for these methods. Um, by default, um, this controller has no particular route method or uh, sort of routing information associated with it. And the uh, method inside of it has no particular routing information associated with it. So that means that just by default, this method will live at the root path, okay? Let's go ahead and stop our application and let's look at how we could create a similar handler method that lives at a different path. Okay, let's say we just wanted to use the same method, but instead of living at the root path, we wanted it to live at the path uh, slash hello. So we want it to handle requests that look like um, uh, slash hello or localhost colon 8080 slash hello. So it just lives at the path slash hello. To do that, I just need to add a little bit of information to my get mapping annotation. Some annotations will accept some parameters and parentheses after the annotation, and get mapping will do so. Uh, I just put a pair of parens after get mapping, and then in quotes, put the path that I want this handler to live at. So just by specifying hello in a string within parens after get mapping, that tells Spring that my request handler should live at slash hello. So we'll do that. We'll start our application once again. Now, if I go back to my browser, notice I'm still at localhost colon 8080. Let me just hit refresh just to show you what's happened. I hit refresh, and now I got a 404 again because that method no longer lives at the root path. It now lives at the path slash hello. So uh, I'll go up to the address bar, type slash hello, and now I get my hello spring response. So I moved that handler method from the root path to the path slash hello. All right, um, I can add uh, a similar method. Let me stop my application again back in IntelliJ, I wanna add a similar method that instead of saying hello, says goodbye. So essentially what I can do is copy the entire hello method with its annotations, paste it in there, and then I'm gonna change the method name to goodbye. I'm gonna change the path to goodbye, and I'm gonna change the string greeting to goodbye. So we say goodbye spring instead of hello spring. Now we start our application back up. Now we have two routes. We have a route to slash hello, and we have a route to slash goodbye. And both accept only get requests. So I can, I can make this request again to slash hello, and I still get the same response, but I also have another route available, and my application also accepts requests to slash goodbye. Okay, so uh, routing and making sure that you're, config you're configuring your controllers and their handler methods with the appropriate routes and the appropriate HTTP methods uh, is an important piece of getting your application right.